Hello, welcome to the Entrepreneurs Network. I'm Rick Anthony. I think you're going to like today's show. It's the story of a young man who had a dream. And that dream is coming true big, big time. He attributes much of it to just luck. He attributes a good part of it to the fact that his mother is watching over him. Uh, I th think it's probably a combination of those two things as well as a lot of hard work and building one success on another. My guest today is Ray Martin, who is the founder, CEO, president, major domo of a company called Hybrid Planted Chauffeur Service. It's a car service. Uh, we used them recently to get us up to New York, to bring us back from the airport, and I've come to know Ray and his story, and I'm delighted to bring it to you today. Ray Martin, welcome to the Entrepreneurs Network. Thank you, Network. sir. Uh, it, it really is inspirational, and today at the meeting of the Entrepreneurs Network, I told your story, I told them we were going to be visiting here today, uh, because uh, it is so unconventional. I was in a room with about 65 people, aspiring entrepreneurs, serial entrepreneurs, angel investors, and so on, most of whom are absolutely convinced, because it's right out of the book, the manual, that you start with an idea, a concept, you go through proof of concept, you develop a business plan, you go for funding, et cetera, et cetera, and that can take a very long time. You skipped all of those steps. You went from, hey, I've got an idea, I've got a car, uh, now let's see what we can do. Yeah. And you looked up and you said, Mom, tell me what to do, and she did, from what you told me. Yes, but before we get there, uh, as we always do, where are you from originally, and what did you do before you started your own business? Sure. So I grew up in Langhorne. I went to Archbishop Ryan High School, mm -hmm. graduated in 1999. Uh, when I was about 15 years old, I told my mom that I knew I wanted to be an actor, and I knew one day I wanted to have my own business. Mm -hmm. My mother had her own cleaning service. She mm -hmm. started with one client knocking on their door, and by the time she passed away, she had over 100 clients. So I always had that drive, yeah. and my father's a very motivated man as well. Mm -hmm. um, so my first goal was to find out how I could become an actor. We weren't really sure how we were going to do that. We found an agent that was at an airport hotel having a seminar. I went and met with her. She had sweatpants on, and she was a chain smoker. <laughs> and she told me, she had a raspy voice, said, Dah, I have a show called Ed. So I had no idea what Ed was. Yeah. So I went to New York that following Monday and had a crew van pick me up at 42nd Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, When was this? This right. was uh, 19, or 2000. 2000, year 2000, I guess okay. it was. Yeah. Um, you had no acting experience. No acting experience. No training. At all. Just a desire to be I Just an actor. knew I wanted to do it. There's okay. two different actors. There's a theater actor, and then there's a TV or movie actor. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I believe there are two different types of acting, obviously, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I just, I, I'm a big movie buff as well on top of that. So I just wanted to be involved in some way. So I went to uh, New York. Crew van took me to Montclair, New Jersey. And... Uh, I saw a lot of kids when I got off that van that looked just like me. And I thought to myself, where do I go now? So I said, where's my trailer? And they said, no, you don't have a trailer. And I said, well, <laughs> where should I go? And they mm -hmm. said, just go over there and stand with everyone else. Mm -hmm. So I did, and a half hour, an hour, two hours went by, and I got hungry. And there was a table with all this food. And at the time, I didn't know what that was called, but years later, I find out it's called a craft service table. So I go over, and I help myself to the food, and the gentleman comes over, and he says, what are you doing? And I said, I'm hungry. He said, no, what are you doing here? I said, uh, well, I just found out I'm an extra, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, well, what else do you have going on? And at the time, it was when Carson Daly was very popular. Mm -hmm. He was on MTV. Mm -hmm. And I was going to be auditioned the following week to be a VJ. So I told him about that. And I said, where are you from, sir? And he said, I'm from Canada. Now, me being from Bucks County and never really leaving Philadelphia, right. I never met anyone from Canada. So I was a little <laughs> excited, maybe overly excited. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, <clears throat> Well, I never met anyone from Canada. You, you heard of MTV, correct? And he said, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm from Canada. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know what MTV <laughs> is. And I said, uh, okay, well, um, cool. And uh, we kind of struck up a relationship. And he said, you're kind of crazy and kind of funny. He said, I'm Tom Cavanaugh. And I said, well, I'm Ray Martin. Still wasn't f yes. catching on. And he's like, well, this is my show. I'm Ed. And I said, oh, I got it now. So um, he said, are you in the Screen Actors Guild? And I said, no. And he said, well, we're going to waiver you in. He said, I think you're going to be a good fit here. And I got in the Screen Actors Guild my very first week of, mm -hmm. of being an, an extra, you mm -hmm. know, which bumped me up to being featured on that show. So for four seasons, um, I got to be featured on the show. Uh, now, now tell the viewers what featured means. Uh, well, there's an extra who's just in the very background. Right. Uh, featured is a person who you'll see 
you know, it was a high school football uh, player, which is what I played. So I would give someone a noogie or give someone a smile mm -hmm. or kiss a girl, you know, all mm -hmm. little things. Mm -hmm. And it would also let me, because I wasn't known as one character, I could go on Sopranos or Law and & Order or Chris Rock thought it would be funny to which have me. Which you did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. And Chris Rock thought it would be funny to have me as a token white guy in a, a <laughs> hot dog scene where he gets beat up. Uh -huh. um, and before my mom passed away, she got to, we went to the Nishamini movie theater and, uh, at that scene, she stood up and said, that's my son. <laughs> and everyone looked at her like, Chris Rock is uh -huh. your son? What uh -huh. are you talking about, lady? Uh, but yeah, so she got to see that, which was awesome. And, uh, and then I did that for, um, until she, we found out that she was sick with cancer. Mm -hmm. And my mother um, had colon cancer. And she went to Fox Chase. And they said she had it for about 12 years. Really? And she was always scared of doctors. Yeah. So if she just would have went to the doctor, she would have known about it. So I, I was an only child. Uh, my parents had five miscarriages, and uh, they thought they would never have children. And I, find, I found this out after she passed away, but pretty much when uh, she had me, she was so weak, they thought she was going to die. Mm -hmm. And I was at Children's, and they said to my dad, listen, we're not sure if your wife or your son's going to live, mm -hmm. so we just want you to be prepared. So a few days later, she woke up, and they prayed, and she said, God, please let my son live, and if you can let him live, you can take me when he's 21 years old. And my mom found out three months, uh, or she passed away three months after my 21st birthday. That's so right. I learned quickly, never make the, a deal with yeah. God unless you're <laughs> going to keep it. Um, so yeah, I, 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 um, when that happened, I quit acting cold turkey because I knew my father needed me, and mm -hmm. I wanted to be with him. Mm -hmm. um, they were together since eighth grade. So I said, all right, I'll move on to the next phase in life. So I came back home, and I knew I wanted to start my business, but I didn't want to rush into it. Well, you knew you wanted to start a business. A business. I always thought Ray's Jakes and Steaks sounded catchy. Yeah, you're right. You know? It does sound catchy. Um, and, and I've been like that forever, you know, with coming up with ideas. And uh, I, I said to my dad, I said, you know, what do you think? And he goes, I, I, don't, I don't know, right? I, he said, what makes you want to do it? And at the time, what I... What makes you want to do what? Well, start, start, your, start the car service. Because I told my dad about the hybrid idea. Where did that come from? Well, this I was going to tell you. Okay. I, um, my wife and I, uh, at the time, we were just dating. We were going to Florida a lot, and we were taking taxis. And the taxis were not in that great shape, and I'm not mentioning no names, but the tape was like holding the door up yeah, or yeah. something like that, or there was a hole in the floor. Yes. And I said, this is horrible. And we saw a Prius parked at the airport, and I said, why hasn't anyone started an all-green chauffeur service? Mm. You know? Yeah. And I was kind of con you know, conscious of the environment and yes. everything, and I said, I want to be the first. So at the time, it was 2008, and the economy mm -hmm. was horrible. Mm -hmm. But my wife, she has faith in me. And um, she said, you know, I'm behind you if you want to do it. I'm the type of guy, I would wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning with new ideas, you know. And my mm -hmm. wife by then was just, you know, used, used to hearing all these ideas. So I called my dad. I said, Dad, you know, what do you think? And he said, Ray, I'm behind you 100%. He said, matter of fact, I'm going to buy your first car so you don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to worry about the payments of that and see how it works out. Worst case scenario, you, you have a car. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. So we went to Toyota. We bought the Highlander. I thought the Highlander was sharp. I didn't want to do a Prius. That was the, the main hybrid yes, at the time. Right. Not a lot of people even knew about the hybrid Highlander. Mm -hmm. Now they're all over the main line. I like to think I had something to do with that. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Um, so we get the car. Um, I get the shirt. I say Earth Day. 2008 is going to be a great day to start. So um, I, had, I started a, a celebrity charity basketball game for cancer for my mother. And it was our first year doing that. And I had Tony Luke, who we all know from mm -hmm. uh, the Cheesesteak Empire. And uh, I became friends with him, and I went down and had lunch with him that day. It was a beautiful day. And uh, we were talking, and, and I said, Tony, I, I don't know how I'm going to get my clients. I don't know if I'm just going to go to the airport and hold a sign yes. up or what I'm going to do. And he said, you can do that, but I don't think it's going to work up, work out. Somebody's probably going to you know, uh, wind up fighting you. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I don't want that to happen. And he said, I said, so maybe that's not the avenue I'm going to go about doing. So on the way home, I missed my exit for Havertown. And the next exit I can get off was the Villanova exit. So I got off, and I stood to my mom in heaven. I said, Mom, maybe you want me to get off here for some reason. I don't know. So I made a U-turn in front of the Radnor Hotel. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, maybe I'll go in the Radnor Hotel. So I walked Had in. Had you been there before? Never, right. never. I walked in, and I went to the front desk and talked to a gentleman named Peter. And uh, I said, Peter, how would you like the first all-green chauffeur service to be 
your uh, car service. And he said, okay. And he said, come back tomorrow. So when I was leaving, there was two guys in suits with luggage. So I went back in. I said, are they going to the airport? He said, yeah. I said, why don't you cancel them, their taxi, and mm -hmm. we'll start a relationship today. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay. So we are driving to the airport, and they happened to be with a big company that was located nearby, and yeah. they said, hey, we, we just moved here. Call this number. So I called the number, and they were already with a big car service. And I said, listen, I only have one car. I'm just looking for a chance. Let me prove to you that I'm good. Mm -hmm. Let me be your first choice. And don't get rid of your other car service. You always have them to fall back mm -hmm. on. I just want to prove what I have. And they said, okay. So by my second week, I got the Marriott Conchahawken, and then I needed a second car. So I made that phone call to my father. I said, Dad, would you retire a year early? Uh -huh. And he has a great personality. And he said, yeah, Ray, I would definitely do that for you. And he did, and uh, he was my first driver. A few months went by, and then I needed another driver. And my cousin Joe I was working at Home mm -hmm. Depot as a manager, making a great living, married, mm -hmm. um, took a chance on me. And he became my second driver. And we became a team. Uh, and for a while, I did everything by pen and paper. You know, I didn't have a business plan. I didn't know. Do you today? No. You still don't have a business plan? Still don't have a business plan. Well, you don't have a written business plan. I don't have a written plan. Everything is up, up here. here. Yes. Okay. Um, things change all the time. Yeah. You know, and you, nothing in a book is going to teach you what, what, what you're going to be thrown at every day. And you've been self, well, your father, but you've been self-funded up to this point. You've oh, yeah, 100%. Never needed it. Never needed it. No, and to be honest with you, my dad helped me tremendously because I didn't have that burden, but mm -hmm. by my second week, I needed my second car, mm -hmm. you know, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it was thanks to him I didn't have that burden going into it, which yeah. most people do. That's quite an advantage. A hundred percent. So we find out during that first year that we needed a license, and there was a big issue because when I first called, I called the DMV, and they said there was only a limo license, not an actual license for the car. Mm -hmm. A whole, whole bunch of stuff. They said I fell into a gray area because I was in uh, the suburbs, yeah. and the Philadelphia Parking Authority is in the city. Uh -huh. So if I'm doing point A in the suburbs yes. to point B to the airport, it's not really under the Philadelphia Parking Authority. So then I called the Public Utilities Commission. And they said, no, you fall under a gray area because you're not doing this. You're not yeah. doing point A to point B in Delaware County and Montgomery County. So I said, okay. So here I started getting threatening phone calls from other limo companies. Oh. And, um, and then I called the PUC, and they said, well, most people quit. You know, most people, most people, you know, uh, give up. Yeah. It's up to you what you want to do. Yeah. We can't do anything but the phone calls. Anyone in Pennsylvania that has a limo license can protest you in court. So I had to go to court. On what grounds? Because they well, can... Well, because you didn't have... No, just even if I went, went about it the right way, yes, yes. I still had to go to court and prove that there's a need for me. Oh, okay. So what I did in the meantime, because I was like already... It's like antitrust. If, if you have to prove that there is a need exactly. for you, and there's, the market is big enough for exactly. two of you or three of you. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I, I didn't want to give up, and I went to, um, I went to court, mm -hmm. and I lost. Um, now, I was leasing someone's license at the time, mm -hmm. who I only had one car. Again, that, that saved me for those few months. I was paying him $2,000 a month mm -hmm. to lease a license, mm -hmm. and I only had two cars. But I had a hustle. And mm -hmm. I did hustle. And uh, we went, and like I said, we lost. And uh, I still didn't want to give up. I got another lawyer. Finally, two and a half years into having my business, I, I finally got my license. It, my PUC license came in the mail. I cried. Um, mm -hmm. It was a big weight lifted off my shoulder. Sure. I, I thanked my mother. And, uh, yeah. and then I broke ties from the guy. Even though he was nice enough to, ha to have me, you learn in business when people have you by... You know, they have you. And that guy had me because he mm -hmm. knew I needed him. Yes. And he really didn't need me, right. so I had to pay. But it was a lear learning lesson, and it got me by. You know, life always throws you obstacles. So that brings us, you know, to uh, have my own license, and then I, I so, went on to have more cars. So where are you today? How many cars do you have? We have seven cars. We Come. do between 150 and 180 rides a week, and we don't advertise at all. How many full-time drivers? I have seven. Well, everybody's subcontracted, okay. you know, 1099. Right. So nobody's guaranteed anything. I understand. Um, that's why I think this business is best for things. retired drivers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and then I have about 16 other drivers. Reserve. Now, Yes. Yeah. Now, I don't have, um, I'm not hiring, and I don't have mm -hmm. applications to be filled out. Mm -hmm. Why, you ask? Because I believe in um, helping people around me. Mm -hmm. You know, I want my family. I want 
my friends. I want the neighborhood guy that lost his job in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's how I am because I, I just want that feeling that I I have them. I know these people. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're each one of these people are a little bit of me. Uh, Ray, as I said at the outset, you have achieved what you have achieved, uh, not necessarily by breaking all the rules, but by simply ignoring them. You, you haven't taken the traditional step-by-step -step sequential approach from concept, proof of concept, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Were you aware of that? Yeah, I mean, I was never a school guy, to be honest with you, yeah. you know? And I've always felt like anything I could learn, I could learn by doing it. Yeah. And that's how I've done everything. But I've you, learned, learned but as I go. I understand that. On the other hand, and, and luck clearly has been on your side. It has. Your mother mm -hmm. has, has been watching over. Uh, you are a hustler. So I you, am. You, you paid your dues. But a lot of people have had a little bit of luck in somebody watching over them and hustled and failed. Right. Why have you succeeded? Uh, my team helps me out tremendously. My, my dad, like I said, yes. uh, my cousin Joe, who is my right-hand man, right. um, and, my, and my dad, I would say they're tied for that, for that position. Uh -huh. They both help me in separate ways. And, uh, you know, without my team, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be anywhere. Without my guys, I, I wouldn't be here. You know, they need me just as much as I need them. Um, again, most entrepreneurs. Do you consider yourself an entrepreneur? Sure. In the truest sense? Sure, absolutely. Besides uh -huh. what you're saying, that I don't do the things that... <laughs> I guess well, I'm you a, haven't done it by the book, that's yeah, all I'm saying. I'm an outside-the-box entrepreneur. And, and that doesn't mean it's wrong. It's right. that you, you have been very fortunate, because uh, I, can, I can introduce you to um, many, many people who have, who have invested time and money and everything else, and for whatever reason, they simply haven't connected yet. They haven't had the kind of success you have. Uh, and I commend you for that. Um, and I hope it'll be, be a model for other people who hold back because they're not quite sure what to do or they've become so conditioned to believe that unless they have a business plan, unless they have all of the accoutrements in place, that they can't take the risk of starting their own business. And that simply isn't true. I probably have a good answer maybe now that I had a second to think about it. A lot of people have too much fear of failing. Yeah. Where I don't have that fear of failing. I, um, every week, my business could change. Is that be because you don't believe you will fail, or is it because you have confidence that if you do fail, I'll you'll learn something from else it out. And, okay. Right. And every week, you know, I have 150 to 180 rides, except between December 15th and January 2nd, because mm -hmm. we're all business people all the time. But I have kids, I have a wife, I have two homes, you know. I could um, not have enough rides come in next week, mm -hmm. you know, but somehow they keep coming in. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because, you know, we have a good team. People know what they're getting on every ride, mm -hmm. and they know we care just a little bit more. I still answer the phone to this day. Yes, I know. Because I want people to feel like it's a family they're coming How to. How old is the business? Six oh, years. Six. So beyond the five-year gravitational pull of failure. Is that what that is, five year? I heard something uh, like that. Generally, yeah, five. Um, uh, let's talk about scaling the business. Mm -hmm. Again, most successful entrepreneurs. Uh, are I believe or are conditioned to believe that if you can't scale it, it's probably not worth doing. Mm -hmm. um, what are your plans for scaling your business? If it's this big now, what will it be in three years? This big? Well, nope. I want to. I want to maintain. I have a revolving door business of, uh, of new clients through my hotels. Um, every CEO that I've met, most CEOs, if there's a CEO out there watching that might have told me something different, I apologize. Uh, but most that I've met, uh, including Bill Ranzik, who won the first Apprentice, have told me to find a number mm -hmm. that I'm happy with making, maintain a happy family life, and, and do it that way. And that's mm -hmm. where I've been. And I'm not looking to make a million dollars. I'm not greedy. You know, I want to be able to provide for my family, mm -hmm. uh, see my kids grow up, and and just enjoy life. If anything, with my mom dying so young, yes. it's taught me that anything could change at, at any time. Right. And uh, I don't want to be the dad that's so invested in his work that he's not there for the so children. So how will you scale the business? I will probably keep it the way it is as long as I can. And then at that point, maybe when I'm 52, I will uh, reevaluate things and maybe knock it down to one or two cars. But you don't necessarily have to scale it by growing what you have. You could go into other markets. I could. Oh, yes. I could also. Um, that's something I'm thinking about doing. We're thinking about going to Naples right now. Naples, Florida. Naples, Florida. Yep. Uh, so Why? I would like. 
Why Naples? We have some clients already existing down there. Yeah. And uh, one of my customers is uh, moving down there. Uh -huh. And he loves the business so much that him and his wife want to want to get no involved. No kidding. Yeah. So that'll be a franchise? That'll be a franchise. Yes. Our first franchise. Yeah. And then I think possibly Los Angeles I would like to go to uh -huh. eventually. Back to uh, your... Uh, as well. Well, I've never acted in Los Angeles. Everything was in New York. Oh, is that but right? I do love L.A. I, uh, uh -huh. I go out there often. I'm a big Ellen DeGeneres fan. And, uh, uh -huh. Maybe one day I'll be on her show. <laughs> Uh, somehow I don't doubt it. We'll see. <laughs> Sooner we'll see. or later. Okay. Uh, what, what have you learned as an entrepreneur, a successful entrepreneur? You can't do anything without your team. Mm -hmm. That's the most important. Um, it's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice. My dad told me that. Yeah. I actually have a tattoo here on my back that says that. Uh, one day when I started doing really well, I guess I was getting a little cocky. And he mm -hmm. brought me down. Mm -hmm. That's the thing about my dad and Joe. They, they bring me down where I need to be, mm -hmm. keep me leveled. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Not your wife? My wife does, too. My <laughs> wife does, too. But my dad and Joe, a little, uh, you know, a little, in a little different way, mm -hmm. a little rougher way. Mm -hmm. you know? My dad said, he said, I want you to always remember that, right? It's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice, yeah. no matter how big you are. And one of my things my mom always loved to do, my mom had the cleaning business, and she wore her cleaning clothes out. Like, we would go to the mall or yeah. wherever, and people would give her dirty looks. Yeah. And she said, Ray, I want you to always remember, treat the busser the same as you treat yeah. the owner of the restaurant. Yeah. And that's important. You know, it really, really mm -hmm. is important. And um, all my clients are the same, whether it's a celebrity client, a business client, mm -hmm. or whether it's, it's someone that, you know, was normally taking a taxi, but they, they decide to try us, you know? You, let me see. Let me pick up on something you just said. Do you continue to learn, then, from your clients? You, you don't do any driving anymore, do you? Uh, once in a while. Do you? For emergencies and things okay. like that, yeah. Well, when you were doing the driving, yeah. were you learning from your clients? You were, you were taking business people down to the airport and to New York and so on? I just always like to, to ask questions. Yeah, uh -huh. I like to ask a lot of questions. And like, like I said, Bill Ranzik was really, like, people pay him for his advice. Mm -hmm. And he was nice enough mm -hmm. to spend the time with me and tell me a few things. And there are little things that I didn't know. Like, um, one of the things was my credit card fees. I was paying... You know, a lot more than I had to. Yes. Um, so that was a, that was a big thing that I could change. So there, there's always stuff you're going to pick up, and you can ask other business owners as well. Any regrets? No regrets. I have no regrets in life at all. None. None. Um, None. No mistakes you've made that you wish nothing. you had. Nothing. Nothing at all. Everything for the business. Like I said, we've only been on the incline since yeah. we've started. Um, and I have, I have not one regret. I don't wish I did anything differently because if I would have done something differently, I wouldn't be sitting here with you today. How do you know that? Because that's how it is. It, anything that happened wrong, it changed the way things were going to be and it changes your course of life. It's like besides business, just in life in general. Everything uh -huh. that happens to you happens for a reason. You know, my mother passing away, I would never have stopped acting. I would never have met my wife. I would never have my two, my two daughters. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. everything happens the way it's supposed so, to happen. So I you believe. believe in providence? Yeah. Not predestined, but providence. Yes. If that's the case, what is your ultimate contribution going to be in this life? I believe life is all about your legacy and what you leave behind. It's so important to yeah, me. That, that means your children. My children and my mark on the world. And my mark on the world is, you know, beside business, um, with my friends, with my family, I have a, a Thanksgiving football game every year. I have mm -hmm. my celebrity basketball game with my cousin, who's my partner in it. Um, I want people to always have something to look forward to, and that's what I want to bring. Mm -hmm. I bring that in the personal life with having events and mm -hmm. having parties or whatever it is. I bring it in the business life with the people when they get off the plane, they know they're going to see yes. a driver with a smile on their face, right. and I bring it as a whole. And I want Ray Mar people to know that Ray Martin brought that to everyone. They I, I think it keeps you going. It keeps yeah. you going. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you haven't completely separated yourself from the acting world. Nope. You have a film and a TV series that you're working on? Yeah, I have. A, uh, what happened was I came up with a TV show idea. I started missing acting. And I came up with a TV show idea where every week we would have a celebrity drive with us. And we would discuss what they're doing to go green and promote whatever they normally oh. promote mm -hmm. on Leno or Letterman. Mm -hmm. And the cameras would be set up like cash. So cap. it's a reality show. So yeah, right. yeah. And uh, it's also kind of like an Orange County chopper feel because with me, my dad, and my cousin, we kind of argue like that kind of feel. Mm -hmm. But um, so we interview the celebrity in the car. So I start calling out to Los Angeles, and I keep hearing about this thing called a treatment. Mm -hmm. But nobody will explain <clears throat> to me what a treatment is. 
So again, me not giving up. Google it. You could have I could could have Googled it, but I wanted to know from the source, from the Got person it. who's okay. in charge of it. So I hear that Paul Rudd and Jack Nicholson and uh, Reese Witherspoon were in town mm -hmm. filming a movie, and they all have production companies. So I went down on that set, acted like I belong, mm -hmm. found Paul Rudd. He answered all my questions. And right when we were about to wrap up our conversations, I'm not going to say who it was, but someone came over and kind of gave me a fake smile and said, come on, Paul, let's go talk about the next scene. Mm -hmm. Well, there was no next scene. Mm -hmm. She was giving him an opportunity to get away from me. Now, I know I'm not a crazy person, but I've seen crazy people on set, sets before. Mm -hmm. And I felt a little, you know, upset. I was upset about that. So uh, he stayed and finished our conversation. And on the way home, I called my friend Mike. I said, Mike, she made me feel like I was a crazy person, like I didn't belong. He said, Ray, you are a crazy person. <laughs> she doesn't know who Ray Martin is. She doesn't care. <laughs> so again, you never know what's going to happen. If a few months went by and I thought to myself, you know, she made me feel like I was going to steal him, right. like I was going to steal Paul yeah. Rudd. And I thought that was a good title for a movie. So I wrote Stealing Paul Rudd on a piece of paper. I wrote 16 scenes, just summaries. Mm -hmm. And I put it in the drawer. A week later, I get a call from David's Bridal. I said, hey, we'd like to talk to you about car service. I said, cool. I went in, the lady said, you're so young. What did you do before this? Told her the whole story. And then I told her about what I just did. And she said, my husband's a writer. I said, a real writer? Because mm -hmm. I just wrote it for fun. Mm -hmm. She said, yeah. So she said, well, you should meet with him. So we registered, we copywrote it, and we made it a real script. So now, over the years, it's been three years, I found out that the reason why we couldn't get it just made by giving it to the agent was right. because we need to have a production company yes. behind us. In order to have the production company, you need to have a manager. In order to have a manager, you have to have a catalog of scripts. Mm -hmm. So where we're at with it right now is it's being given to Luke Wilson next week. So we'll see where we're at. But I'm not going to give up. I'm not going anywhere. And the film? Stealing. Oh, it would be, it would be oh. changed to Stealing Luke Wilson. Okay. We were talking about the TV series? Well, that was both. I, oh, okay. That's how okay. I came up with the show, the uh -huh. show idea. And then uh -huh. I went in, and that's how the movie was born, because of the show idea. So both of those things kind of progressed from that situation. Okay. So we have both of those things. Do right you have now. any aspirations to get back into acting yourself? Yeah, well, that's kind of like my Rocky, that movie. Yeah. Uh, it's like my Goodwill Hunting. Uh -huh. You know, I'll do it for free. Uh -huh. I just want to make sure that I, I oh, play Oh, you Ray, see yourself in the film. Yeah, I want to play Ray, Ray Martin's the lead character. Yeah, you, I don't think anyone else could play Ray Martin better okay. than Ray Martin. All right, all right. So, so you are the next uh, Sylvester Stallone. We'll see, we'll see. But like I said, you know, if, if whatever's meant is going to it's going to happen. And, and I'll tell you, the, the experiences that I've had over the last three years trying to get it made with mm -hmm. my partner, Walt, my writing partner, mm -hmm. um, could be a movie in itself, mm -hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. It's a great story, Ray. Thank you. I, uh, I don't know where, how it's going to end. Uh, I don't know what the final chapter is going to be. Uh, you don't either. Uh, but my sense is you're, you're writing it one chapter at a time. And you probably know better than anybody else uh, what the last chapter is going to be. Um, you're going to be a success in almost anything you do. I'm sure of that. I'm sure your mother would be proud of you and is proud of you. Uh, do you have any inclination of mentoring other entrepreneurs? Sure. Sure. Do you do anything like that now? I don't. I don't. Well, we should talk about that because uh, I think you could be helpful to other people. Okay. Uh, particularly those who, as I said, are just too timid to seriously consider taking a risk. Uh, I'm not sure you ever thought that you were taking a risk. It was just another step in life that you, uh, you were being led down a path. I, th I think that's what you're telling us. Um, th that's a wonderful position to be in. I would really do it all is. over again. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I hope you can be helpful to other people as they, they uh, take their journeys down the path. And, uh, thanks. If, if people want to be, get in touch with you, they, what's the uh, website? Uh, it's, you just Google hybrid planet, hybrid like the car, okay. planet like the earth. Okay. You'll see hybrid planet chauffeurs right there. All right. And, and if you'll they see call, my they'll, face. they'll get you on the other line. Yeah, on I'm the, the only one line. who answers the phone. Okay, good yeah. deal. And we're open every day except Christmas Day. Yeah. Good deal. To take calls. <laughs> Thanks for being here. I really Thanks appreciate it. Thanks so much. It. Yes, sir. Great story. Until next time. Well, next time you need to arrive to the airport, be sure to uh, give Ray a call or to New York. We're almost anyplace else, I guess. Mm -hmm. Until next time, this is the Entrepreneurs Network. I am Rick Anthony. Take very good care of yourselves.